All right, guys, uh, we're going to take a quick look at uh, how to adjust the Charlie Terak. For those that don't know what we're looking at here, the Charlie Terak is an optical accessory that simply adds a bunch of elevation adjustment to your scope just by attaching it. You can add anywhere from 1,000 minutes or 300 mils to the scope, uh, anywhere in between without having to change any kind of rails. You don't have to change your rings. You can keep your cheek piece in the same spot, uh, and you can keep your 100 yard zero and all your uh, regular dope for your optic works as normal. And when you need the additional holdover, you just simply clip this unit on the front. It's uh, basically uh, a group of mirrors like a periscope with an exact offset set into it. And uh, instead of tilting the scope, you simply adjust the Charlie Terak to give you the amount of elevation holdover you need. Now, uh, these are kind of a unique unit that uh, warrants a little bit of attention on exactly how to set it up. It's actually pretty simple. So in this video, we're gonna talk with the actual engineer who designed the unit and uh, perfected it and uh, we'll allow him to to explain exactly how to get it set up just perfect. Okay, I got it. We're out on the range with the man himself who designed the Charlie Terak unit, and we're gonna talk about how to get this thing properly set up. Because it's actually not as hard as it would seem even as scary as this whole deal looks, okay? So it's actually quite a simple process. All right, take it from here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with three basic field items. The first one, which is the most basic, which all of you guys will get to at some point, is you'll adjust the unit, and you'll adjust the unit, and you'll adjust the unit, and all of a sudden you go, I'm lost, where is it at? Readjusting it to zero is really straightforward. What you're gonna do is choose a horizontal line in the distance, and a distance could be 20 feet, it could be in your room out to hundreds of yards. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look through it. I'm going to look at the horizontal line through the unit and to my right hand side, or if you're left hand, right through the unit, left hand side. And I'm going to take my, I've broken these three adjusting screws loose. One, two, three. You break them loose so they are loose. Maybe a turn off. And as you can see, I can actually move it around right now so it is not adjusted. What I'm going to do then is take my drive wrench put inside the Allen driver. I'm gonna look down range. I'm gonna turn that screw until my horizontal lines up. Technically at that point, you'd be surprised, but I'm almost bet with a little bit of practice, you'll be hit within a minute or two minutes MOA of being back to zero. You are now re-referenced. And that gets you back to zero, gets you to a starting point, you are no longer lost. Now this rifle has already been within reason set up plumb, and now we're going to get to what we're going to use in the field. The field, or a distance, is literally what, you're, what you feel comfortable with zeroing in on for a short distance. This scope I can zero in at 40 yards because I can't see anything at 30, but I can do is 40. Some can be 50, some can be 30. And that becomes a ratio based on, it's an angle. MOA or mil is an angle. We have an extensive chart that goes to 200 mil by quarter MOA increments that gives you the value in mil and MOA, inches a drop, millimeter a drop, at 100 yards and 50 yards, or 100 meters and 50 meters, and you can take fractions thereof of how far am I away, what's the fraction, and you can put a tape measure on your garage, or in this case, I used a landscaping stick that I bought from Menards for $49.53 that happens to be measuring 13 feet tall. We're at 50 yards. The advantage of 50 is at 100 yards, 30 mil, 40 mil, 50 mil becomes hundreds of inches real quick, and you run out of space. So the 50 is practical. So what I'm gonna do here is, the, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set the rifle down. I have the stick sitting off in the distance, and it, if, if I use my fingers as a stick, I'm gonna set my rifle zero, what I know my zero, onto the top, stick or a number that I look at. It's 100, 100 meters zero right now. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna bed the rifle and you know, cause the advantage of this is I can look through and I can say, yep, I'm on my stick. I'm right there. I'm not, uh, that's my home zero. And I can go back to it again and again and again cause the Charlie's not on it. I can double check myself cause I haven't moved anything else. Now what I'm gonna do now is let's say off in the distance, 30 mil needs 50 inches at my distance. I'm going to take this unit, I'm going to drop it back on it, and it's close to zero, but it doesn't have to be zero, because don't forget, 
your scope is home, not the Charlie. Your scope is. So if I drop this on there, right, I'm going to go ahead and put my drive in place. And yes, the main is kind of draw it around a little bit. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to look through my scope and I'm going to start dialing down. I just watch my crosshair. If this is my stick, I watch my crosshair going like this. Because once I lock the crosshair down here, I have to raise my gun up to get the shot. Mm -hmm. There's your elevation. Gotcha. So I'm going to dial down until I see 50 uh, on that unit. And, and I'm going to leave it just a little short of 50 to, be, to tell you the truth because the distance between the top of the Charlie to the center line scope is about 1.2 inches. So it's important to note that a slight offset is going to occur because the difference between the distance scope center line and the Charlie Terex optical center is a little bit higher than that. That offset is going to bring you, uh, you know, one and a half inches uh, or 1.3 inches, assuming you got a one and a half inch uh, ring height at 100 yards. If you're closer, the error is going to start to include the scope offset as well. So, of course, as the range increases, the ratio of your offset will continue to move the zero forward. So just do know that that offset does exist. So on elevation, 1.2 inches on that zero where my rifle's sitting on an angle and my scope is sitting like this, 1.2 inches is going to be a problem. So essentially, if I know my zero is 100 yards, if I'm at 50 yards, I'll leave it about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 inches short, which at that distance is, you know, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 mil. And I'll leave it short and lock it down. And at that point, and my lockdown is real basic. I'm using a, I'm using, using a regular Torx drive right now, but if I, hit, I would use a Torx driver, I'm going to tighten clockwise, one, two, three. I'll finger tight them first, double check myself, because if I had to, I can tweak it mildly. Now, this is not made for heavy tweaking. If you try and lock it and move it with this, the unit will, will move because you've loaded the system. It's got a heavy preload. And as, as, as you know, a few screw turns puts a lot of load into, into places. So I'm just going to tweak these, touch them, finger tight. I'm going to look, double check myself, and then I'm going to go... 40, 50, 60, and that's it. This is, I'm, I, I'm, I'm 1 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 11 o'clock, so I'm going to go finger tight. Literally fingers, it just, I just felt drag movement. I will now check it again, come back, I'll take a torque wrench, 40, 40, 40, check. Then I'll go 50, 50, 50, 60, it's 60, 60. Just to 60. retighten it. Yep. 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 Just a note if a person has to take this apart, they can, but you want to keep all the washers in order on top, underneath, with the screw in the same location. At that point, I'm going to take the unit back off, double check I'm still on my 100 yard zero, put it back on, double check again how many times you feel good at. At that point, this unit has been field set with either a stick, a ruler, tape on your garage that's been that you've set for that, that's your permanent 30 mil mark. Um, and again, distances as long as you have know the ratio that we would give you, or if you want to look online, conversions for um, MOA to mil, mil to inches, or however you want to call it, is readily available. But we have, we're happy to send you our chart that would give you that number. But it's that simple. You cannot you cannot get lost. And if you are lost, set it back to zero, start all over again, okay? Now, you're talking about finger tight. A lot of guys want yeah. to quantify that. What's your recommended inch-pounds rate? Literally, finger tight is when I, when, I, when I initially feel it, just stop, I'm done. Just get it to yep. stop. Because uh, this, is, this, is an original, this is actually an original Charlie, and this is my prototype I carry around and just beat up on. The newer units, the way they're built and the finishes we use, finger tight is you can't move the unit. It's already because of the texture of the yes, device. It's it locks locking it itself in. real quick. Now, uh, what kind of concern uh, do you have to worry about checking to make sure, uh, sure these screws don't walk out when you're firing a bunch? Well, once I go 40, 50, 60, she, it, ain't, it is not moving. Okay, I wanted to reiterate yep. that point. Okay. Yep. So, it's just in a nutshell, let's go through the step by step procedure real yes. quick, bullet point list. 
Number one, you get a, a zeroed rifle for 100 meter zero. Yep. You set up a yardstick at 50 yards. Let's talk about that. A yardstick, top of this tape measure. It's just a ruler, whatever you want to call a measuring device. And that's, mm -hmm. that was my reference to a garage. I could put a piece of tape on my garage. Let's say it's a store and a half tall. I put a piece of tape, blank number up, measure down my 50 inches, put my other piece of tape, and there's my two references. And then I can basically convert using the math that we teach, right? Yep. Uh, my mils or minute of angle holdover I want this to give me yes. at 50 yards or whatever distance I'm at this closer. And then I simply turn this until it matches up. Until it matches that number. Like I said, depending on your distance, you're going to be a little short. Okay. That way you don't have an overshot. And you'll also find within reason that being a little short will will have you'll be closer to target than if we put it over because it will it you have much longer extended okay. uh, error. But so for guys who want a standardized uh, procedure, a standard operating procedure mm -hmm. for doing this, let's say we're at 50 uh, yards, okay? Because mm -hmm. that's very common on ranges. Yes. What's the actual min inches of measurement going to be for a 20? Let's say we're going to go with the 20 mil deal. Off the top of my head, 22 inches. I'm, I'm 22 I'm, inches. That's not a number okay. I keep So, memorized. for example, you'll figure it out. Now, you're going to want to carry it out as close as you can if you want to be precise as you can. Yes. As tight as your ruler can go. So, get exactly the amount you need. So, yes. you're going to measure off 22 inches. Yep. And then, where are you aligning your optic? I set the optic back on to either the magnetic attachment. Okay. If you have a rail, you can actually take it off. If I set the optic like this, sure, it's fine. I guess I, I, what I'm asking is where do you put the crosshairs, the you, reticle? You leave before you Are put you it on. Are you centered on something on that yardstick? I, I have let, I've, in this case, I put it on the top of the yardstick zero. So you're on the top of the edge yep. of the yardstick. Right. Okay. Because that's easy for me to remember. Mm -hmm. When I take it off, I can look back and go, am I still there? Gotcha. Or put it back there again. Easy peasy Japanese. Easy gotcha. peasy. Okay. Okay. Therefore, when I'm, when I'm dialing this one down, and you'll see, you'll just you'll see them. It's just walk right down your yardstick. Just walk right down. Every time you turn, it shall drop down. When you hit, in this case, your 22 inches, and let's say I leave it at 21, being a little short, I will initially touch the screws, double check, double check my 100, come back in, take my next torque reading. So with the Charlie attached, you're turning those adjustments you just explained until your crosshairs moves down to the number of inches that would translate to the minute of angle or the mill you want. That is correct. I just want to explain it from a couple different angles so that everyone kind of gets what we're talking about. That is this, correct. It's a flexible system. You can do this at any distance, really. You can do this any distance. Any distance. And, uh, but the more precise the measurement, the better. 50, right. 50 yards, pretty good. That is correct. Now, are we talking for the guys that are OCD level, super detail oriented, um, are we talking to that yardstick, where's the end of the tape measure coming here for the distance? Are we talking to the Terak or the center of the, the scope, the erector assembly or first focal plane or what are we talking about? For me to date, I've only used the front, the Terak itself. I, okay. have, I have not taken it that nth degree to tell, being truthful. <laughs> uh, You're a realist, you understand uh, the reality uh, of the Absolutely, math. absolutely. Yep, yep. And some uh, at, at that level, a person will make a measurement and take it to, to optical center lines. Okay. Uh, for for us uh, on our concrete walkway, we have a line. Gotcha. And then that's what that's where that's where we're going. To, that's where we're going to. Now, of course, you're going to want the rifle pretty steady when you're doing this. Yes. yes. So you're going to either have like a setup like this where it's really solid and tight. Yep. Uh, you could use sandbags potentially, or if you have like a vice deal, you can adjust. Yep. But you're going to want to make sure your crosshairs is on the top of that stick you put the steel on here without the disturbing the lay of the rifle and then you did like you said with the adjustment right. mechanisms adjust on the, the side adjust the side so clockwise is giving me longer range okay. clockwise i'm going towards zero okay and finger you're, tight yep torque 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 as you're torquing just do your double check mm -hmm. and we're all set easy it is terribly easy yeah and even you know the thing is that you you are so close that at your thousand yard shot or two thousand yard initial test, even if you're not an expert, your your first shot's going to land well within your view, well within. It's yeah. not like you're going to be chasing it. So therefore, it's just one adjustment because therefore it's consistent thereafter. And what we have found is I always tell people, you know, the first time you're going to do this, you're going to spend 15 minutes doing this because you're going to be scared you're going to break something. And you're not going to break anything. The next time you do it, you're going to spend 10. Next time you do it, you're going to spend more time getting stuff out 
two minutes doing this and putting more, spending more time putting it away gotcha. than, than, that, than that first time. Now, what about Kent? Let's talk about Kent a little bit. So Kent, I, I actually, the, the yards, the stick I have downrange is squared to a, to a level. So therefore, I can set my gun down. I can make sure my, my gun is level with whatever fixed, you know, unit I'm using here. I can line up the, the crosshair within the reticle level. Mm -hmm. Then when the Charlie goes on, guess what should be level? It. It should be square <laughs> with it. And that adjustment is just the little, on the, on the adapter is that little side screw right there. That's the adjustment. You break that loose and turn it a little bit and or use initially use a level. As the Charlie shows, the Charlie is specifically machined with a bunch of flats on the top. Flats for side, side movement, and front movement. We're about to talk about the front side of it and why it's there. But um, it, it's made to be simple and usable in the field. The level will put you very close because that's how the unit is initially set up. Going to a, a known vertical, though, in the end is your optical system because now you've included the scope. And if you have to readjust something, readjust something in the field, telephone poles are usually level. Telephone Fence poles are Fence posts are usually kind of level. Pick something that's level yeah, we pick or up, horizontal. That is correct. We pick yep. up light poles and telephone poles in the field. And some guys, you know, if we don't have a stick in the field, we'll use the reticle. We'll back out the zoom, choose a point of the pole, dial down, look, okay, this is my point A at 30, or like in this night force, I can see 28 mil. So I'll, 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 dial, I'll look at 30 mil down or stack up here. I'll do 20, add 10. There's my next point. I put this, the gun back at my zero, dial down to my point on my pole, 400 yards away, lock it back down. Now, once you've passed your zero, then you, you can pretty well dial direct to your value. Now, of course, as the distance extends, the more precise in many ways you'll become on that initial shot because your error is becoming reduced as, as, uh, because you're seeing a, a true view. Roger that. So okay. One added piece of information. This is a little bit of those pro tips that guys like us like to share. If you're using a plumb bob, and it's a 50 mile an hour wind, you want to make sure you factor that in there. There's a certain <laughs> constant you multiply by, right? No, yeah. you just make sure it's level though. But yeah. uh, be, be aware of how you're leveling it. The more uh, uh, attention you pay to detail when you're doing anything like this is gonna be money in the bank to get yes. it perfect. But in general, don't stress out too much about those infinite details, but being OCD on this is fine too, right? That is correct. Yep. Now the so, third method, is just using a digital level. If I know that my angle that I'm going to move is, is 20 minutes, which is 0.3 degrees, let's say 0.30. If I set a digital level onto my gun, the advantage of this is I just set this on here and I know that I have an initial value. Now I'm going to move my 0.3, 0.3 degrees or whatever value it is, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to move the gun and then dial backwards on the Charlie and reset it again using the level. So and just those moving the flats level. are designed yeah. to use the level. Use the level. So you paid close attention when they're machined, I'm assuming. Yes, yeah. yes. Right. <laughs> so and the only difference in there is you're not necessarily looking 100 yards zero or zero. You can and use this reference. Now you're using two references. Now you have a optical reference and a digital reference. Mm -hmm. Now when you tilt the gun to your new angle and you dial the Charlie back to where it's supposed to be, Life just got easy. In this case, actually, we would have to raise the gun to the angle, bring the Charlie down. But again, you can then double check yourself. 100 yards, zero, optical, or whatever different distances you have. My level says this, this is this. And there's, of course, money is, everything's about money. You can get digital levels that cost six and $700 that are our single digit MOA values, like one MOA. So, but it's what you pay, like everything. Yep. But that is, same thing. Very, very rapid. Very, very simple. And you also have flats machined the other direction yes, for we your do. cant as well. So there's the that's your initial setup for your cant. Gotcha. Okay. Now another question is, uh, the way this is attached in the front. Let's remove that Char Charlie real quick. So here's the adapter that's uh, set up for your scope, right? Yes. We have the top bolt that attaches this to. This threads on yep. like a sunshade. Like a you sunshade. actually use sunshades, right? That's correct. And so this is built into a sunshade built for the exact model of scope you have. And when you fill out the order form, when you buy one of these, that's something that you'll have to know which scope you're going to get that set up for. But uh, when you're tightening this top screw, that's what tightens it on there. For rotation. 
for rotation. That's so correct. you can, once you loosen the screw, then you can adjust yep. it this way and that way. What kind of torquage are we looking here? You're only talking about 10, 20 pounds of torque, uh, uh, inch pounds max. 10 or 20 it, max of yeah. inch pounds. Okay. Because 10, 10 pounds, you can't, you've bounded. And what people don't recognize is anodized on anodized is really sticky. It's kind of like getting a, putting a bolt in an anodized service. It's amazing how it locks. Well, anodized and anodized locks itself up very efficiently at low, low values. Okay. Now, how about uh, putting it on front of a sunshade, like you said you can, before? You can put it in front of the sunshade. You could put it all the way on the end of the barrel. I could put it on the end of the barrel, yes. <laughs> You're, if like I'm a front moved, sight. It, one of the demonstrations we do is we'll, we'll set this in, on a rifle, let's say, uh, king of two mile, and we'll start doing this. And we'll go, what do you see? Uh, I don't see anything. What do you see? I don't see anything. What do you see? I don't see anything. Because we're using a basic optical property Schnell's law, which is fairly good over a fairly wide range of angles. And I like physics. Physics is free. Usually doesn't fail us too quick and also ruins us pretty quick too if you don't treat it right. But that's the whole point of the system is it's very reliable and very simple. The only place it's, it's, it's sensitive is in Cant, just like your scope. To, ex to the same degree your scope is. So again, to reiterate, you do have some forgiveness going this way and yep. this way yep. because it's a prism that's only arranged in a fashion like this, the right? Parallel holograms. So you can go like this, yep. but in terms of can't this way and this way, right. that's where you got to get twisting the image adjusted around. properly. That is correct. And then when you uh, set up your yardstick test, uh, and then you can custom do that and you can change it if your mission parameters change. And all of a sudden you want to make that bazillion yard shot correct. and you need even more dope. You would go through that same procedure to get a different amount of holdover. Now, how much variability do we have on the Charlie? How much can you move it? This, this, these units can move over 400 MOA. The the base base unit can. Uh, the current units are upwards of 800. Um, at that 800 number, or even at 400, you usually have to start adding another device to look down the edge of the barrel because unless you're using a six-inch barrel or putting the device way out side on the end on the end. The barrel will come into view. Yep. This this rifle, I can shoot 400 mm away, the way it's set up right now. The barrel is only 32 inches long. The current heights I have allow me to do that. The other thing too, another question people have is, does this rail have to match that rail? No, it just happens. These are level rails. I do this for a reason. It's for demonstrations. One to show the the use of the Charlie because I have to use it all the time, but it also allows me to line up to unknown night optics because everything is on the same plane. But if this was sitting at 80 MOA and this is level, this will work just fine. It might be off maybe an MOA of tilt, but it will be consistent thereafter because you're not changing your gun and it didn't change. So uh, you can have pretty big rails and the front can mismatch by a fairly large amount number and there will be no effect on your downrange performance. Rock and roll. I'm your Huckleberry. Oh, you got it. <laughs> Alpha Nine or Tango One Three. This is Pirate Treasure King. Indexing is the solution for seven. What in the hell are you holding? Ah, it's not here. It's an MP49. It's a saw. Target's got good cover. It's a danger space for a headshot at TRP5. Hi, Mom. It's me and my pals. Say hi, guys. Hi, guys, Mom! <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, man. You're shorter than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> These are super.